Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. So as you guys know, Monday is Ghost Story Day. I read all your ghost stories that you send to me here on this email address and we create a look kind of based around a way to die, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so let's just jump straight into it today. I'm gonna to be using this eyeshadow palette from Spoiled Lips Cosmetics. It's one of my favorite independent companies, brands even, and they do these amazing, incredible palettes. I just love the pigmentation of these, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Today's inspiration for the kind of dying look is from one of the comments one of you lot left below in the last week's video, and that is um, dying from being, well not, not dying from being a witch, but a witch burn at the stake. Stake, that's the word. I was just thinking what it's called earlier. I think I called it a fire stick. Yeah, but you know, she's still living because she's a witch. Fire can't kill her. Also, just to give you guys a heads up, I have to change this background. It is, <laughs> it is impossible to get the lighting right because I it just washes like this is my this is my skin color, but it looks so pale on camera that sometimes it just reflects off light, you know. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit. We're still gonna keep it a little bit spooky, but it's just it's so difficult to edit and for the camera to focus. So as I always like to mention at the beginning of these videos. My ghost stories and makeup series is very much inspired by Bailey Saren's Murder and Mystery Makeup Mondays, where she mixes true crime and makeup, two things that she loves, although I'm sure she doesn't love doing true true crime, she just likes talking about it, and does a makeup look, and that's what I like to do here. I like to take my other love, which is a supernatural and ghosts and the unexplained, and create a look for all of you. As always, I'm sure you already know Bailey, but I will leave a link to her channel below in the description box. Okay, shall we do it? Let's do it. Okay, so let's start with our first story. Let's do it. I'm a little bit tired again, just so you know. I'm up super early filming. It's a busy week for me this week. For those of you who um, didn't catch my live stream, I have a very exciting video coming on Friday. Is that Friday the 7th? Um, look out for that. So our first story, stories from the old farmhouse, yes. Hi Robert, I was too nervous to submit my stories since I looked up to you so much and I worry you won't like them. Of course I would like them. But this past week I've been super sick and have been binging on all your ghost story videos and thought I might as well tell you mine. I grew up in an old farmhouse, so I have many stories about ghosts and oddities. I'm very logic based and definitely wouldn't believe so firmly in ghosts if I hadn't experienced the things I had. All of my family have stories about things that have happened to them in this old farmhouse. So I'm gonna share some of the things that I can think of off the top of my head. My own story is when my father was leaving for work in the evening, he works a night job, and I was waving goodbye to him through the window. As I was waving, in the dark, I saw someone's face above our fence. No. <laughs> it's like they were walking along behind the fence to the front gate. This terrified me for a few reasons. Firstly, our fence was six feet tall, or 1.83 meters. So who or whatever was walking behind it was easily seven foot tall, over two meters. The second thing that terrified me about this is that they were walking towards the front gate. Were they trying to get into the property? The third thing is that the figure didn't bob like they were taking steps. Instead, no, it sort of glided or floated. Finally, it wasn't like the light from the house was reflecting off their skin, but rather the figure emanated its own light. I told my mother and brother after my father drove away and they both went out with flashlights to look around. With the recent rain, the ground was super soft and though they could see both their own and the dog's footprints, they found no others. So who or whatever was walking behind the fence left no trace of their existence. I also told my father about the next day and though there were many branches and bushes and sticks behind the fence, he heard no rustling or commotion that should have come from someone walking back there. The next story is from my twin sister. One night we were all sitting in the living room 
talking to each other as she was sitting on the bottom step of the stairs facing the rest of my family. As she was talking to people, she felt someone brush alongside her like they were trying to get up the stairs behind her. She moved out the way, assuming it was one of our dogs or cats, but then she felt human footsteps thumping on the steps behind her. This confused her since she could see the whole family in front of her. She looked behind her and though she couldn't see anything, she could feel someone's presence. She felt the footsteps recede from her as they went up the stairs and then they stopped at the top. Normally, you can feel and hear when someone leaves the stairs and walks into the hallway, but instead, the footsteps just stopped. She felt so strongly that whatever went up the stairs was staring at her and she moved from the steps to the couch across the room. The next story is both my sister's and my own. We were both young and brushing our teeth in the upstairs bathroom. The bathroom is very small and on the other side of a bathroom wall is an attic that no one uses since it's blocked off besides the cats that crawl through a tiny hole in the blocked off wall. As we were brushing our teeth, there were three very pronounced knock, knock, knock on the other side of the wall. The wall that was shared by the attic. Naturally, I freaked the fuck out and dropped my toothbrush to leave, but my sister knocked back and tried talking to whoever was on the other side of the wall. Why, why would he do that? I grabbed her arm and yanked her out of there. This wasn't a one-time thing. Over about two years, I have heard it three times and have since refused to use that bathroom. Even when I think I'm about to wet myself and a downstairs bathroom is occupied by someone showering, I absolutely refuse to use the upstairs bathroom. There are other stories like my father seeing someone in a red dress behind him or seeing figures in the windows. But we're very fortunate that whoever occupies a house besides us is ambivalent. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. And doesn't harm us. In fact, there have been small instances where we believe whatever lives with us is trying to help us. Love you, Robert. Hope you enjoyed my stories. Thank you so much. I did. I am so happy you sent Rose in. Very well written and very well told. Thank you. I feel like when something knocks on a wall or door or your face, whatever your ghost is doing, I feel like it knows it's like up to something. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and just scare these people. <laughs> I'm going for like a sin singed, singed? Yes, yeah, singed from like, so I want it to be dark and kind of blending out. I'm just gonna take a little bit of black. I filmed yesterday, so all my um normal favorite brushes aren't clean. <laughs> so I'm having to use like, I, I like all my brushes, but then these obviously aren't my favorite, but I'm um, having to use all my ones I never really used before. That's, that's, that's life. Okay. Oh no. Our next one is called the Vet Clinic Ghost. Video attached. If there's any dead animals in this, you know I'm going to be crying. Okay. Let me stretch it out before we get into this. So it says, hi Robert. Hi. I started watching your videos last month and absolutely adore you. Thank you. You helped me learn so much in such a short time and are genuinely one of the best people on YouTube. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I subscribed to you. Thank you. I'm glad you did too. I've been a vet tech for about four years now and have worked at my current clinic for going on two years. For the most part, I've only heard about our clinic ghost. Some of the stories took place at their previous building and some are at the current building. When we move locations, our doctor just casually invited the ghost to come with us. Why? We named it Steve, but our doctor is convinced it's a woman. There's always been small things, like doors being opened that are normally kept closed, things being moved that nobody would typically move, that sort of thing. Nothing that causes alarm in a busy work environment. There were a couple of times the security alarm would go off at night but nothing would be wrong or disturbed when police arrive. Our doctor often talks about the time he was in the building alone and heard a woman cough right next to him. Or when he was doing a routine dental on a dog and our monitoring machine went haywire and it looked like the dog was dying when it was actually completely fine 
and had a normal heart rate when the tech took vitals. The doctor claims the machine went back to normal when he yelled for the ghost to step away from the dog. Most recently, there have been instances where people hear footsteps when they're alone. We close on the weekends and have assigned people to come in alone to take care of boarding or hospital or hospitalized patients. What did I do? What was that? What was, why did I just do this? My friend said she was completely alone. Doors were all locked and she heard very distinct and heavy footsteps coming down the hall. Of course, no one was there when she looked. She heard them again in the offices upstairs, as it's always very easy to hear when someone's up there, but she knew she was alone. There was another time when she brought her boyfriend and he swore he felt someone touching his leg, but she wasn't near him and there were no animals out their cages. He was pretty freaked out by it and wanted to leave soon after. Just this week, the clock in our survey room randomly fell off a wall and it was nearly across the room when I went to see what the loud fud was. Nobody had even been near the surgery room that morning. It could have been a coincidence, but I can't help but wonder if it was our friendly ghost. The most exciting thing that happened though, happened just this past fall. It was either around Halloween or near Friday the 13th. I just remember joking that it must have been the ghost's night to play. The doctor and his wife were up late and decided to check the clinic camera to make sure everything was still going okay. They noticed something strange on a couple of screens. In the lobby camera, first row, third screen, they noticed a light flashing over the reception desk. Strange thing is all the lights were off and there isn't even a bulb over where the light was flashing. You can also see that it's not where the lights from the street would be shining in. It's just directly over the desk, not under a bulb in a dark room. There was another screen, second row, first screen, that looked like a shadow was moving in the corner. It could be a trick of a light, but again, it's completely dark at night. And the doctor says that sort of thing has never happened before. Sorry for the video quality. It was taken on his phone. Thanks for reading. I hope it was entertaining for you. If my dog went into a vet clinic and some ghost started fucking around with her operation, I would be very angry. I wouldn't be happy at all. Thank you so much for your story. I wonder if that ghost is just like, what better place to haunt than a place where I can see cats and dogs all day, every day. Maybe she's there to help them when they die. Thank you so much for that story. Okay, I just want to do a little bit of intricate detail on my crease. So I will be right back. Let me finish my coffee, it's probably cold. That's so cold, but I'm gonna drink it anyway. Okay, so I just want to do some weird little cut crease thing today. <laughs> cool, cool, okay. Okay, our next story is called Bloody Woman in the Driveway. I love your videos and content and can't wait to tell you this story. Thank you, I can't wait to hear it. This is not a ghost story, but it's a true story that scares me even to this day. It was the summer of 2014. And I was home alone with my sister who was nine months pregnant. We were watching a movie and she said she had to ask me to get up and shut the curtains on the first floor and lock the doors like we had always done in our home. As I was about to lock our front door, at the end of a driveway, I see a woman standing at the end of my driveway with two huge dogs. They were digging through our trash. I called my sister over and we called out to her saying, hey, is there something we can help you with? The woman initially had her back facing to us. But when she turned to face us, blood was all over her. She was also wearing a winter coat. It was July. Without saying a word, she began to walk very quickly to our porch with her dogs, who began barking viciously at my sister and I. We immediately called the emergency number and explained the situation to the dispatch. 
While my sister was on the phone, the woman tried opening our front door and yelling things we couldn't understand. Not long after the cops showed up, she had vanished. The only thing she left behind was the bloody footprints she left at the end of our driveway and her blood was on our door. The cops searched for her for a very long time. It was if she had vanished into thin air. We never heard what happened to that lady. One of my biggest fears, and I think I say this a lot, I have a lot of biggest fears, is looking outside at nighttime and seeing a figure or a person or something that shouldn't be there. To see a, a person covered in blood. That's just terrifying. Thank you for that story. That was so cool. And guys, it isn't just ghost stories. I want stories like that are perfect. Anything that's slightly weird, you know? That was such a perfect story. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so our next story is called Ghostly Cats. Greetings from West Virginia. Hey. I'm a new sub and I must say I find your channel to be delightful. Thank you so, so much. Over the years, I've had more than a few paranormal encounters. This is one of the more outstanding. For about three years, we rented an old two-story farm-style house. This house was odd as the entire back walls of the downstairs was part of a rock cliff. The house stood on a hill with no other homes near it and had been occupied for three years prior to our renting it. Occupied, like it's two words, occupied. Sorry. It's only, it's only owner being an elderly lady who had to go to a nursing home due to poor health. Not long after we moved in, myself and my oldest son saw from time to time what appeared to be a small dark cat. It would suddenly appear from nowhere and just suddenly vanish. Then my husband asked me if myself or one of the boys had gotten the cat. He said he kept seeing the cat which disappeared and when he approached it and no matter how hard he looked for it, afterwards he couldn't find it. I told him that we didn't get a cat but that I had seen it also. I began to take a close look when it appeared. It didn't walk like a normal cat, it glided. It wasn't solid, it always seemed blurred and shadowy. Its colour was faded black with brown. Its eyes were perfect circles, always softly glowing with no particular colour. Its tail was unusually long, it never made a sound or responded to me talking to it, and it quickly vanished if anyone approached it. Time went on and a cat would make its weekly appearances. I never felt any fear or unease. The cat thing seemed harmless. A few times I even left cat food or milk out for it, which went untouched. One day, I was rocking my two-year-old son and the cat suddenly appeared in the center of the living room. My son yelled out, a doggy, as he called all animals doggies. It glided past us and vanished into thin air as it reached the doorway. I wonder sometimes if it was a spirit connected to the cliff of the house was partly made of. Of course, I've never heard of cat ghosts, <laughs> but none quite like this one. There didn't seem to be any purpose of a cat's presence, like a ghost of a cat which once lived there, as a lady who owned the house had never had any pets. I also had the impression that there was more than one. I don't know why I felt this way as we only ever saw one. I'd rather be haunted by a ghost animal than a ghost human, <laughs> right? Thank you so much for that story. I've just put a load of blush on to look um, orange. So I'm gonna add a little bit of bronze um, contour, a little bit of highlight. Well, I'll tell you our next story. Ooh, number 10, number 10. <laughs> It's not number 10. <laughs> the story is called Alone with the Jars. Hi Robert, really quickly wanted to say I love your video, thank you. Okay, here's what happened to me. When I was around 10, I lived with my usually absent father and ill grandmother. We lived in a three bed, two story house in the hills. It was very cold and empty. I don't remember a time I ever felt comfortable in that house. I'd always felt like there was something weird manifested in the house. I would tell my mother to stay with me until I wasn't alone when she dropped me off for my dad's custody days. I eventually adopted a cat, which gave me the peace of mind that hopefully whatever entity wanted to hurt me wouldn't 
want to hurt the cat, keeping me safe. My mum usually brushed off my worries as being a scaredy cat, since it was an old house that was prone to creaking and such. The day this happened, my grandmother was on vacation and my father wasn't home as usual. So I had two different size mason jars. One was pretty small, but the other was about an average jar size. The jars didn't matter. It was the bouncy balls I was putting into them. I had about four dozen of those rubber balls that cost 50 cents in those gumball machine things. The whole point is, the small bouncy balls could fit into both jars, but the large ones could only fit into the large jar. I had organized them into their proper jars when my dad came home. I distinctly remember him yelling that he's brought dinner home. So I turned towards the door and shouted, okay, when I turned around, the large rubber balls were stuffed into the small jar. So tight, the jar began to crack down the side. The large jar had been knocked over, the bouncy ball still rolling as I got up to run downstairs. Whenever I tell this story, everyone either thinks I'm lying or I got scared as a 10 year old for being in a room alone. I still don't know what would have been able to switch them in such a short time, let alone whatever was strong, but careful enough to only crack the jar, not break it. For a few years after that incident, I honestly believed I was going crazy. It's been six years, I've long moved out of that house, but every night until I did for four years, I slept in that room in fear. Looking back, I feel like crying. All I can remember is how scared I was and how alone I felt. How even I was crying and screaming and pounding on the door, my dad wouldn't leave the garage. Thank you so, so much for sharing that story with us. That is weird and terrifying. It's almost as if something was kind of like taunting you a little bit, or maybe it was something that wanted to comfort you in a way because it knew you were scared. I don't know, it sounds very, um, yeah, scary. Okay, two more stories. I have loads for you today. Our next story is called The Girl's Drawings. No, anything, children drawing things. Mm -mm. When I was living in Fujisawa, I hope I said it right, Japan, I was in second or third grade. The first day I made a friend of a girl that was taller, skinny, and long black hair. She looked like a schoolgirl. She was a natural beauty. After school, we would hang out in the front garden of the school. One day she asked if I wanted to see her drawings. They were scary, creepy drawings of ghosts that she saw around me. She told me to be careful. Then the drawings intensified and she would draw while on our hangouts. She gave me notebooks after notebooks so I can know what they look like, so I can be careful if I see them. Then one day, she asked me to start drawing with her, and I just drew out of my imagination because I couldn't see them. One day my stepmom saw these notebooks and asked me where I got those. I told her the whole story. She told me to stop accepting the notebooks and stop hanging out with her. She said that drawing ghosts can bring those to life, and they can haunt me. A couple of days of not going to the garden, I never saw the girl ever again, as if she disappeared, like a ghost. But I have always felt a watchful eye. I was so scared I never mentioned it until now and never wrote about it. I lived my whole life with guilt and being scared. This is my first time saying anything. Since moving to Oregon, I feel a little better, as if whatever it was finally let me go. Why do children have to make everything scary? Where's that brush gone? Listen, if your kids have ever drawn anything terrifying and you don't mind sharing, send a picture to my ghost email, I would love to see. Okay, so while I stick on some lashes, we have one more story today. And this story is called, Sorry. Hi Robert, so this story is going to sound stupid because anytime I tell it, it sounds really fake. And honestly, if somebody were to tell me what I'm about to tell you, I'm not sure I believe it, but here it goes. Probably about five years ago when I was 13, I was at my friend's house during the summer and we were playing outside. 
Her parents went home and they had some people over at the house working on the roof. So basically it was just us. Anyway, we were outside walking around in her front yard and out of nowhere from behind us, we hear somebody say, sorry. We look at each other and was like, what the fuck did you hear that? We thought we were just hearing things because seriously, what could it be, right? So we ignored it and kept walking around and again from behind us, sorry. We looked at each other, now freaking out, like, what's going on? So I say, okay, this is stupid. Maybe it's coming from our phones. Let's just turn them off. So we turn off our phone and immediately hear it again. This time, I'm in tears, freaking out, and we sprint to her backyard, trying to run away from whatever this was. When we got to the back, we start to think about the workers on the roof. Well, first of all, this was a female voice and the workers were all male. And second, there was no way it came from the roof because it sounded literally directly behind us. So we were around the house in the backyard and for the fourth time, we hear it. Sorry. Wherever we went, it was right there with us. Now we 100% don't know what's going on and we run inside the house. I'm crying and we're turning our phones back on. As soon as my phone turned back on, I start taking a video, laid my phone on the kitchen table and we were silent, just listening, nothing. Since we went inside and listened for it, there was nothing, no sound, just static. Ever since that day, we've never heard the female voice again. We still talk about her, and we've even given her the nickname, Sorry Girl. I promise you this shit sounds fake as fuck. I know that, but it's 100% real. Listen, have you heard some of the stuff I've read out on these videos? That sounds, if anything, more realistic. Thank you so much for sending that in. I sometimes think they're the scariest stories, um, especially when it's like something like someone saying sorry, and it's like, what are you sorry for? Why do you keep saying this? Like. It's haunting. All right, everyone. Well, this is our finished look. Um, burnt at the stake. We have some redness going on, some like char grilled areas happening. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me this week. Thank you so much for your stories. If you have a ghost story or a weird story or a creepy story or, um, well, that's it actually. Just send it to this email address here and I will try and read it out here on this, um, on these Mondays. I'll leave um, a product list of everything I use below, so go ahead and check them out. There are some affiliate links, so they'll be clearly marked there, and some discount codes for you if you want to use them. You don't have to. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you have an amazing week ahead, and I will see you Wednesday. All right, guys, bye.